Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen, and welcome to the show. Umaima Mindro is the CEO of Vida, a fashion e-commerce company that offers artists and photographers a means to transform static two-dimensional artworks into flowing, uh, beautiful articles of apparel. She's with us today to explain how artists can participate in this exciting world of fashion. Hi. Hello, Darlene. Welcome, welcome to the show, and thank you for being here. It's nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me. Um, it's kind of hard to ignore the elephants in the room, so I thought we should start out and talk about how my painting got morphed into a living piece of work, workable art. So the first step, the artist has to upload images of their artwork to Vida. Then what happens? That's absolutely right. So any artist can upload an image, and it could be a painting, you know, that they take a photograph of, or it might actually be a photograph. It might be a sculpture. Um, once they upload that artwork, the artist can actually design the product themselves. They choose, you know, whether they want it on a scarf, on a top, on a sheer wrap, and really design, you know, what that beautiful piece would look like and how they should represent their creative vision that transforms into a piece of fashion and apparel. How do they do that? There's a, a tool, a fashion tool or something. How do they do that? Exactly. So we call it the design studio. Yeah. And uh, you go there and you literally upload, you, you, know, you browse the files from your computer and you upload the image. And you will see it in real time in your computer. You will see it on a top. And then you can literally move the file. <laughs> you can move it, you know, so that if you have a flower, for instance, you can put it on the shoulder, you can put it over here, and you can also scale it down or scale it up. So you decide as an artist, you know, how large you want that image to be. You can also decide what's in the front, what's in the back, and really design the piece, you know, the way you envision it. Wow. So that's all just moving it around. Moving around, yeah. And seeing what you would, you know, that, that's really quite exciting right there because um, to take a painting that's very uh, clouds and so forth, from what I understand, you could take a portion of the painting. So let's say you had Venice, for mm -hmm. instance. Uh, you could take just a portion of the scene and not the whole thing. That's what I find very exciting, that you could just manipulate. And, and you can just do that until your heart's content, until you find something you like, right? That's exactly right. And yeah. then um, what is this? It's an artist page, you call it. What happens next? Yeah, so once you're happy you know, with what you've designed as an artist, you give it a name. Um, and um, you basically save it. You, know, you say, this is, this is what I want it to look like. And we publish a page for you. It's, it's essentially like we are creating a website for you. Mm -hmm. um, and on that website, the artist can have their profile photo. They can have their um, information, you know, their bio. And each of their um, uh, images that are all, you know, presented on that page. That is the page that is the artist's own page, you know, on the Vita site. It has its own website address that they can share with anybody and that is their, you know, their um, artist collection. And is there a limit to how many designs they can have? Uh, not really. I mean, the limit is about 100 designs or so. <laughs> so, you know, we've had, we've had some people, you know, wow. some amazing artists uh, reach that limit and then, you know, we help them, we help them with that. Um, but the idea is that, you know, this is really their space and it's really, really easy to set up and you don't have to be you know, technically savvy, or you don't need to know how to create websites or how to sell products online. You know, you really can focus on your vision and your art, and yeah. we can we can do the rest. Wow. Well, we were supposed to have the real deal here. We're supposed to have a sheer wrap with the painting of the elephant on the sheer wrap, but a little slip in the um, mailing didn't come today. It's expected at any moment, but it didn't come. So we're going to have to rely on pictures. So we have some pictures to show of the wrap. And this first one is showing um, a picture of the elephant there. It's uh, another version that I did. I, I used digital magic. And it's, it's another version of the elephant playing with her baby. So that is uh, what really surprised me is when Vita used both of the images mm -hmm. <laughs> for one piece. I wasn't expecting that. So a little digital magic and 
you have the first one. Then the next one is showing the back side of this piece, the wrap. And this is the original version, and that is where the, the mom is playing and kind of teasing her baby mm -hmm. with a flash of, of water. And so it, this is just a minor detail, but uh, even the ear was, you know, in the original painting mm. was cropped off on purpose. Mm. And uh, so the designer wanted me to send an, an image of the ear that's wrapped around the canvas. Right. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me about the designers that designed this piece. Yeah, so we worked very closely, you know, with Darlene and um, our small team of designers um, worked, you know, with Darlene in creating this piece. Um, especially in a colleague of mine, uh, Galen, and he was really inspired, you know, by by that piece. And what he really wanted to do was, especially on the back side of that sheer wrap, you know, he felt like that's a large canvas, and he really wanted to represent your vision in full, you know, so show the full painting in the back. And then he thought in the front, you know, he wanted to keep the pieces intact. Um, so he thought, why don't why don't I repeat it, you know, and yeah. have them be symmetrical on both sides. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I know our team was incredibly excited, you know, to get to work with Darlene on that piece. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, we have some more designs from the elephant that the wrap is, is what we just showed, but there's some other designs, um, number three, if we could have number three, um, there, that one. So that was just kind of a practice one, mm -hmm. or it was another possibility. Exactly really putting the elephant in your face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was outstanding. And then the back side of that, so a real close up. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and you know one of the one of the things is that what we're doing is we're digitally printing. You know, once the we talked about the collection page going live, once that happens, you know, we're digitally printing these and what, what we really wanted to do in this case is show how all the details, you know, can really show through and all the colors and the original colors from the painting. It's amazing. Uh, and the next one, uh, let's see, what do we have? A scarf, I think it's another version. Ah, so there is, is what it would look like if the elephants were on a scarf. So I, I just thought Beautiful. that was amazing to see all these different versions. And of course you could do more, I guess, but yeah. uh, that, that was quite a bit. So now the second painting is of roses. Yeah. And uh, we actually have a very lovely model, Kathy Keys, to show is this, this nice, uh, converted it to scarf. And this painting is a lot smaller, mm -hmm. and that's to show that you can have something smaller. You don't have to, you're not limited to size. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I love the way the colors came out. It's very, very close to, uh, it's the same, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, we thought this piece was just absolutely fantastic. It's just breathtaking artwork, you know, and we get to have the honor of presenting it on, you know, on a scarf. This particular scarf is a 100% modal fabric, and modal is made out of um, beechwood. So it's a natural, you know, uh, man-made um, fabric that is made in a very environmentally conscious way. You know, that is that is important to us, and it just feels beautiful, luxurious, right, Kathy? It feels like really soft and uh, um, just, you know, it's an all-season scarf. But what we're really proud of is, uh, is uh, the amazing painting that, you know, that it's showcasing. It's very lightweight. It's very lightweight. You don't even know it's on. It's, uh, huh, Kathy? It's very lightweight and it's just, um, and of course with her hair, it looks really, really stunning. It looks stunning. gorgeous on her. Um, yeah. So thank you, Kathy. Maybe you'd like to put that on our guest. Oh, Why I would not? love that. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's, that's kind of what I was hoping, is that I get to wear the scarf. <laughs> um, I've been eyeing it. So I, you know, I just absolutely love this piece, um, especially if you're wearing, you know, all black, um, which, you know, many of us do. And it's just a beautiful statement piece. And just, you know, the colors on this are so gorgeous. And just Darlene's, you know, vision Thank and you. work is, is Thank absolutely you very much. phenomenal. Well, it's exciting to me because, to me, the... Canvases are nice, but I just think that art is moving in another direction. Mm -hmm. uh, I do attend a lot of art and wine festivals, and I, I try to keep a watch on what the art scene is like. And I hate to tell you, but I'm seeing less and less wall art. 
Mm. So I think I see a lot of jewelry mm -hmm. and I see clothes. And so I think that people want to do something more. They just, a lot of times I hear they don't have room for mm -hmm. large pieces mm -hmm. and they want something else. Yeah. So uh, do you hear anything about that on your end? Yeah, I know that's what I think a lot of our artists get very excited about is that it is a new avenue for them. You know, it is, a, it's almost a new canvas. You know, and a lot of the times it is a painting that they already have, you know, but now you transform that painting into just a new form. Um, and I think that's what is really exciting and inspiring for us as a company is to bring art into our life in many, many different forms, you know, into our houses, into our, into our spaces, into, you know, what we're wearing, um, how we're representing ourselves. You know, this piece, when I wear this, you know, uh, back in the office, you know, it, I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna lift me up and it's gonna, you know, make me feel uh, just, just sort of unique and, 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 and great. And I think that's, you know, what art can do for you. It's a story and we want to bring that story and that piece of inspiration into our lives in many, many different forms in addition to, you know, on the walls. It's bringing a little bit of nature. That's right you know, yeah. around you, which I always think is a good thing, and uh, you can engage some of the senses. So a lot of people like me and many other people like roses, mm -hmm. they think of the scent, and it's just a way of, of bringing nature around you yeah. close. Exactly now, I watched a lot of your, I watched your TED talk, and I watched a lot of your interviews and so forth. I find that your family's history is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Uh, and your story is wonderful, and you know how you got to where you are now. So, could you recap some of that for us? Yeah. So, I mean, it is an honor, you know, absolutely to to be here today. I come from a very humble background, um, originally from Pakistan. My father was the only person who was educated. Um, growing up, there were no schools around. I didn't have access to, you know, formal education. You know, good good part of my life, I would wake up and, you know, grab some books and uh, and 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 read. And I think, you know, sometimes not having something, you know, really gives you um, the appreciation of that thing that you don't have. And I think I grew up with, uh, with the drive and hunger um, to do more with my life and, um, and to, you know, to be educated. So I had a dream to go to Harvard. And, uh, and my, <laughs> other, my other dream was actually to be an artist. Um, I really, you know, it was just sort of a natural thing for me. I um, learned to paint, I learned to sculpt, you know, I did photography, um, but it was really hard coming from where I came from to believe that, you know, I could make a living being oh. an artist. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I kind of pursued this path of, you know, well, it was it was computer science actually. <laughs> Harvard, <laughs> more right yeah, 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 and uh, and and I really, you know, I really kind of wanted to. Uh, um, I wanted to do something meaningful with my life. I felt like, you know, I wanted to grab the few opportunities that that came my way and and turn them into something that you know really matters. Um, so yeah, I, I was lucky enough to you know make my way to the U.S. and you know, get a great education, ultimately go to Harvard and um, build this business where, you know, our hope is that we can give back um, to all that are a part of, you know, creating this product from the artist whose original vision it is, you know, to the people who make these products with their hands, to the people who are bringing these products into their lives and feeling inspired, you know, every time they, they wear it. What happened when you went home? When I was young, when I was growing up. After, after Harvard? After Harvard. After Harvard, and you went home. What happened? You uh, mean when I just traveled back to home? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, one of the, one of the things was that I actually, um, I, when I got into Harvard, I actually felt not quite as if I belonged there. You know, I was <laughs> like, I don't know if I, if I you know, really fit in here. Um, I authentically you know, just felt sort of uncomfortable, and I actually left. Um, and I went back home and uh, I wanted to build a school in my home village um, and you know there was just this sort of one thought which which was that these are my cousins this is my family you know we kind of share the same gene pool and um, they must have the same drive they must have the same you know intelligence um, and uh, I want to build that you know um, opportunity for them as well I was at Harvard and I had family that didn't know how to spell Harvard 
And so, you know, that was one of the things that um, really mattered to me is that, you know, build that, you know, build something that can then last. And then I, you know, I did, I did do that. I started an organization, um, built our school, you know, in my home village, and then I went back and well, I was like, I'll check about, the box I read something and get about a hospital. So your parents were both in the medical field. That's what, right. What happened with that? Yeah, so my parents are both in the medical field. We actually um, grew up on top of the hospital that they built. Um, my uh, my uh, parents met in, in, at, at the medical school, and uh, my mom wanted to go back to my dad's village and build a life there. And uh, so, yeah, we, you know, we lived um, on top of this hospital in the middle of kind of nowhere. <laughs> Wow. But uh, my mom, you know, she's uh, she's the one who's really instilled sort of this idea or, and this, you know, this concept of wanting to give back. Um, and, uh, you know, she felt like she couldn't leave her patients and they were traveling for days, you know, to get to that hospital, um, wow. which is why we ended up there, you know, and yeah. not deserting them, you know. Um, yeah. Well, I, I love your vision of wanting to build a corporation that helps and benefits everybody involved. So how do you give back to your factory workers? Yeah, so that is really, really important to us mm -hmm. is to build it in a way, build products that are made in a beautiful way and not, you know, where the end product is beautiful, but the process of how it's made is also beautiful. Um, so what we've done is, um, in our factories, we offer literacy programs. Mm -hmm. And we've completed these programs in Pakistan, where, where I'm originally from, um, where what we do is we, uh, we train one person in the factory, and that person then teaches the, the entire factory, or we form small groups. And in three months, they learn to read, write, and do basic math. And the impact has been, you know, actually I would say beyond sort of what I was hoping for in some ways. I mean, there have been some surprises in that, you know, I, I, I knew I was hoping that they would feel the value, you know, of being able to read, write. What I didn't expect is this, um, this one story where a father, you know, told me that he had uh, been working at that factory for decades. Um, and the reason he does that is because he wants to be able to earn enough to send his kids to school. And his kids go to school. Um, and his kids are getting, you know, an education, but they don't speak the language that he speaks because they're educated. And he was like, because of this literacy program for the first time, now I'm actually able to have a conversation with my children. Wow. Um, so you don't realize, you know, what the ability to actually have a conversation, you know, and how it's tied to just basic literacy, um, you know, where our factory workers would tell us that they feel not lost anymore when they're walking down the streets you know they feel like they can read the signs they know where they're going and that gives them a sense of purpose and direction in their life you know as much as while they're walking on the streets well, um, your company's still uh, fairly new isn't it yeah we're when, just about two years old 20 end of 2014 is wow. when we started you've accomplished an awful lot in that short amount of time um so we i think we have some pictures of the factory workers maybe we could see that some of the pictures. Can you tell us a little something about the factory? Yeah, so these are pictures from our factory in Pakistan, indeed. And actually, um, the woman there is the trainer. We started off with an all-male factory, um, <laughs> and uh, which is very common, you know, in in, uh, in Pakistan. And it's very different. We work a lot in India. We've worked in Sri Lanka, which is mostly all all women um, in the factories. Um, we are going in Turkey now. And so, you know, we had uh, a woman come in and, you know, train um, the one person and then he trained everybody else. But then, then we built a women's um, department. So now all our products are actually um, finished, you know, by, by women and they do the quality control. They do a great job. Wow. Um, and then we just recently, you know, launched the literacy program with the women as well. Wow. So how many workers do you imagine that you have? Do you have any idea? <laughs> you know, how, how many workers do you have? Do you know? Yeah, so in terms of overall factories, mm -hmm. so those are the countries that we're in, about 15 factories that we work with. Many wow. of our factories are actually very small, family-owned factories. Yes. So in any given factory, we would have 10 people, 12 people. Um, and um, it's, you know, that's kind of what we love is that these are people who really know their craft 
many of them have been doing it for generations. It's, you know, their oh. mother or their father was a tailor as well, you know, and now they're getting an opportunity to hopefully do more, you know, for their families with the literacy program. And, um, but yes, yeah, small family owned factories, you know, across all these places. Um, and then as far as our artists, you know, we now have close to 50,000 artists wow that from are all Alveda. over the world from right? all over the world yeah so that's what's <sighs> you know it's exciting because that was very important to us again is that you know we get we get certain opportunities but you know there's so many parts of the world where there's amazing talent right yes. and they they don't get that opportunity so you know talent is not really you know it's not about where you live or what you have it's it's what you know, you have to offer um, yes. to the world. So our artists come from over 150 different countries. Wow. Yeah, 2,500 different And for cities two years, being in, you know, that's not, that's not very long. So you really, that, that's telling you and showing you that the artists are very willing and wanting to do this sort of thing. And I, I think it's very exciting because it's just a, another avenue. It also was such a learning experience because this idea that you can move things, add things, uh, subtract, you know, yeah. uh, you can move things around. So you can actually take one painting mm -hmm. and then if you have the skills, uh, you can like change them and get different looks. And that's pretty nice instead of starting all over from scratch. Right. right. So I guess that's uh, the digital magic kind of helps out there. That's right. That's <laughs> right. The, the hope was that, you know, we can use technology to give and create these tools, you know, for the creatives of the world um, to really empower them, you know, to take their, their vision and be able to present it to the world, you know, in any way that they want. That's really the idea. So, you know, we're focused right now on textile and apparel, but our vision is that we're the platform where, you know, a creative idea turns into beautiful products and stories. Mm. So where do you see Vita in like five years from now? What do you see? I know that you have a lot of growth that you want to do, and I know that there's an awful lot that you're working on, and you actually have another corporation that you work with. So expand on that a little bit. What, what your vision is for five years from now, or is that too shallow? Should I say mm -hmm. 10 years from now? What, what do you have that you want to keep going with this? Yeah, I mean, I think we at the company um, are driven a lot by the impact that we're making, but the number of lives that we're touching in many, in many ways. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to the artists and what we can enable for them, you know, we look at, well, you know, did they want to come back to us? You know, did they, if they did, you know, one product line with us, you know, what did, what did we enable for them? You know, that wasn't possible otherwise. So how are we making their lives better? Um, and when it comes to the factories, you know, we look at, well, if we can do this with a small factory, you know, can we start to create something, a ripple effect where, you know, that value is shared in that local community? Can you build it, you know, from a factory level now to a community level now to a country level. Um, I was in, in Pakistan when, um, you know, because when I started, I knew I wanted to do something where we impacted, you know, the people who are working in the factories, but it was something that one of the factory owners said, and he said, you know, sadly, we don't have great quality. We don't do great quality because none of our factory workers are literate in Pakistan, in the country. And I was like, well, we got to change that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, can we impact it at a country level? You know, that would be kind of, you know, that's, that's the dream. Wow. And as far as artists are concerned, is there any particular countries that you would say has a uh, higher impact of artists or anything that you've noticed, any observations that you have? Yeah, a uh, vast majority of our artists are um, from here, from, from America you know, and, and from all parts of the nation, you know, so um, East Coast, West Coast, every, mid, you know, everywhere across the country, um, which wow. we're very, very proud of. We also do a lot of um, production work in the U.S. We do our printing in, in San Francisco, well, in California and out close to L.A. Um, and Florida. So, you know, we love sort of doing work here in our neighborhoods and vast majority, vast majority of our artists are from the United States. Um, hmm. And then after that, you know, Canada, um, Canada, UK, Europe okay. is actually big for us. Um, yeah, a lot of our artists come from various parts of, uh, of Europe, but then, you know, we have artists from Africa, you know, we have artists from Australia, we have artists from really 
all parts of the world, Australia is actually usually ends up in our uh, top five countries. So you were telling me that we have what scarves, mm -hmm. tops, and wraps. Yeah. And you, you told me there's going to be some more things coming up in the future. I heard pillows, <laughs> throw pillows. Um, tell me about that. What, what are you seeing there for? What kind of line are you moving into? Or is this going to be another choice that artists can pick? if they would like to do that, or is, have you started doing that yet? Yeah, so this is all upcoming. <laughs> Good. Good. We're announcing it here for the very first time. <laughs> but yeah, we're very excited to um, you know, offer the home line. So the idea is that you, know, you can have beautiful pieces you know, in your home. Um, and uh, we're starting off with pillows. Those will be made in Turkey, um, nice. where we're also hoping to do some really, you know, really good work. Um, and so, you know, that's that's our next uh, next space that we're coming in. But that's not the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more, more. There's definitely more. There's definitely a lot more. Um, you know, our idea is really that we are the platform where, you know, you can go for beautiful, unique products that are made in a way that make a difference, make a positive difference, um, and that each tell a unique story. You know, of inspiration that you know comes from the original. You know creative that that really imagined that product wow well i just i think it's very exciting i want to thank you for letting me participate in this because it's something i've always wanted to do and i had no idea on how to go about doing it uh, it's not that easy to knock on a door <laughs> and say hey i'd like to put my art on your clothes yeah. so i want to thank you for doing that i want to tell the people out there that are watching, especially you artists, uh, please expand your horizons and always strive for something a little bit more because you can do so much with your art and it makes the world go around. Right. So um, you can check the website for details on, on the clothing, how to go about doing it, and also check out um, Umama's stories. They're really fascinating. Thanks for watching the show and watch again. Right. Yeah, like this. Yeah, see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. I don't know how to use it. But that's very exciting that you're expanding it.